the alarm. Uh, I tripped. <laughs> What's going on guys? I apologize for my voice. I have a cold, a little under the weather. Don't really want to be here doing this, but I'm doing it for all of you, even though nobody cares. Well, some of you might, but anyway, today we're going to be working on the Blitzkrieg mini bike project. We're going to get into what we're doing to it and why. What has happened with the Blitzkrieg since the last video on it? I'm just going to kind of cover that real fast here. We did put smaller tires on it. These are 13 by five by sixes. These aren't 13 inches tall, just so everybody knows. These are a lot shorter. I think they're like 11 inches tall. They're very, very tiny tires compared to the stock tires that came on it. In fact, that's a 72 sprocket on the back and you can see that the tire is almost the same diameter as that. If you wanna roll over on the tire at all, when you're turning, you gotta be real careful not to hit the chain on the ground slash the sprocket so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be switching out the sprocket in the back we also added a 30 series torque converter this is off of amazon and it was like 70 dollars. it wasn't that expensive and honestly the quality of it's pretty decent i may have said this in my other video if i did sorry but the bolts that mount this bracket here to the engine are coarse thread that come with the kit and i believe it's fine thread um, is what the side plates threaded to. I was able to tap out the engine and I did notice however that these bolts are now loose after running it just for a little bit so I need to put some lock washers on it and or some lock tight to get it to stay on. The other thing is I have to shorten the chain up a little bit when we put the smaller sprocket on so we've got our chain link breaker to do that with. Also we had to raise the engine up about an inch and a half as you see here to get the torque converter to not interfere with the frame down here. We also had to cut off the fender mount and do a few other things. But overall, it's coming along nicely. Uh, it's probably gonna get painted or powder coated here pretty soon, so not too worried about the exposed metal and everything. One other thing you'll notice is the exhaust pipe is much bigger diameter. This is actually a proper one inch exhaust now. The other one we had on it, I think was like three quarter inch conduit. This one's, I believe one inch. Much bigger diameter, sounds a lot meaner. It flows much better. Gets into the upper RPMs really fast. So that's a good upgrade. However, when I built this exhaust, the engine was sitting more to the right hand side of the bike and I had to move the engine to the left side of the bike a little bit to get the chain to align with the rear sprocket after adding the torque converter so that's good because it kind of balances out the weight of the bike a little bit even though the torque converter kind of makes it tip to this side naturally but everything's more centered up now it's got a Makuni 22 millimeter on it I believe we covered that and it also has the sweet clear valve cover from go power sports and here are the parts that we are going to be adding from go power sports so here we have a sprocket adapter for the rear and this is a universal adapter you have four hole um, mounting option or a six hole mounting option and then you use their split sprockets i'm keeping it with a 35 size chain for now i know i might be throwing chains or breaking chains a little later but for now we're going to run the 35 chain and see what happens they also sent us some bolts and I did order a 53 tooth split sprocket and I also ordered a 60 tooth sprocket. So we're gonna start by putting the 53 tooth on it. Right now the bike has a 70 tooth, so 10 teeth less is 60 tooth and then we've got 17 teeth less is a 53 tooth. So we're gonna get into that and we're gonna start installing these parts.
thing I've noticed here when I was holding this up is I would like to put the adapter on this way. However, if you look at how this is constructed, uh, that would be spacing our sprocket a quarter of an inch further away from the tire, thus misaligning our chain. The chain is set up right now to have a, just a one piece sprocket like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it this way with our split sprocket retaining bolt heads inboard like that. I could still access the bolt without pulling the wheel off and all you're gonna see is this plate here. So now we're gonna put it all together and make it work. One thing to note as well, on Go Power Sports website, they show these being anodized red. These are not red. I'm not even sure they're anodized. They actually just look like raw aluminum to me. So heads up on that. They're not quite as advertised. So if you get upset about stuff like that, you probably shouldn't order it. So we got the split sprocket hub installed on the mini bike wheel. We had to modify it quite a bit, a lot more than I would have expected getting a part from Go Power Sports, but we did have to make some modifications. And a lot of those modifications are due in part to where the chain guard bolts onto um, right next to the wheel spacer. I'll show you that in a second here. We had to remedy that somehow or another. So what I ended up doing was countersinking the sprocket adapter and using um, flathead screws and I also tapped out the holes to quarter 20 which is more of a common size thread pitch than the metric it had on it so hopefully those hold up well we did use some Loctite on them so I don't think they're going anywhere I also had a chance to take the thing for a test drive today and it is still pretty scary in fact I did ride a wheelie with it again I should have had the camera on the bike because it was pretty hilarious but um Nonetheless, this bike is definitely going to need wheelie bars and we're definitely gonna have to do something about it's wheelieing. So here's what we had to do. You can see these six screws here are black now. We actually countersunk the adapter here itself using a tapered countersink. And then we were able to use these other screws. Now, like I said before, these screws are quarter 20. I ended up having to tap out the hub to get everything to fit. As you can see here, we had to trim the bolts down a little bit because they were hitting this bracket as well. We did end up installing a hydraulic rear caliper for this, and it makes a humongous difference. I had to weld on a bracket for it, but the brake line and everything was the proper length that I needed. As you can see, the brake hose comes up here and into the master cylinder. In fact, everything was pre-bled when I bought it. So that's what we did to the Blitzkrieg mini bike project for this episode. Um, the next episode should be some riding videos and actually more testing videos of it. Also, we're going to be putting some wheelie bars on it. I don't know how I'm going to make those quite yet, but I'm working on an idea up here. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Sorry about my voice again. I'm getting over this cold finally. Also, be sure to stay tuned for an update on our ridiculous mini bike build project as well. We're getting... Uh, lots of progress done here and i will have an update video on that project coming out soon so be sure to stay tuned for that thank you for subscribing be sure to click the thumbs up button if you haven't already and we'll catch you on the next video